I know the size of every single guy's dick in this office. Sometimes unhealthy is what works. Add your thumbprint in his or her setting. Welcome to Slut Camp. I'm fucking out. None of this love making shit. No, fuck me like a whore. That's what it's about. 24 hour fuck fest with six girls. Okay, it is your now single father, Alex Cooper. Back at it again. Um, my name is Grace. My name is Terrell. I'm Angelina. I'm 19. I'm Tommy. I'm 20 years old and I'm a white cis gay man. And I'm a straight white woman. And I'm a daughter of an immigrant. I started listening to the podcast probably junior year of high school. I've like seen some and heard some compilations and like stuff from here and there. So my relationship used to be really relevant. I still listen to it religiously. She went from like a storyteller and like sex advisor to this you know interviewers I've seen some of it like online especially on social media and i listened to about two or three episodes what do you think feminism is um i think it's about like gender equality the equality of women and um just the sexes i guess for um women and men to be given the same opportunities and for um, things be put in place to make sure that those opportunities are equal. I do think Call Her Daddy is feminist in that it talks about necessary conversations that have been left out. I think to completely discount it as something bad would be a step backwards in the wrong direction. I think it does do some necessary work, although in a flawed way. I know, personally, I would never take anything they say seriously. You know, it's just like a fun podcast. Like, I wouldn't like take advice from it, per se. It had roots with Barstool, which is definitely not a very like feminist place. Especially when I was starting out, it kind of perpetuated like the Barstool culture. A lot of the things she talked about have to go back to the male gaze. Like, the lingerie she wears or like what she does in the bedroom is all to please men. It just doesn't make sense to me that we see them as misogynistic and then we do them back and then we call that equality. In order for them to even be talking about this or having a podcast episode on this topic, you have to almost think about it from, okay, what's a male thinking? So you kind of have to go into the mind of a male to make a lot of the content that they talk about. And an episode that like sticks out to me, like they were saying something about how you should act sexually based on how hot you are. And you're just like, oh, like, well then, if this is how like a man would rape me, then like, I have to act a certain way. I think like that is directly like influenced by the male gaze. That is like I would say that's internalized misogyny. I do think that I can argue that Call Her Daddy is feminist. One of her recent episodes is with Courtney Stoughton. She was a 16 year old that didn't like look 16. She um, got into a relationship with this 51 year old man and she was just ripped apart by the media. Guy kind of just like escaped and just like somehow flew under the radar and she brought her on. You know she was a child. She was 16. She was groomed. She um, was a victim. I think it was really empowering for this podcast to give her a platform to talk about her experience and allow her to like reclaim that in front of the world and so that she wasn't just this gold digging whore. She was a person, she was a victim, and she was taken advantage of by a very misogynistic society and very misogynistic um, news reports that were just ripping her apart. Yeah, I think it definitely has evolved into a show that I think that celebrities that are asked to be on it do genuinely look forward to it because it is a chance for them to reclaim their image and talk about things that are too taboo for other interviews um, on that show. I think it's really cool. Do you see intersectionality within Color Daddy? No, I see none. I've never seen anyone with a different race than her, sexual background really. In that aspect, you're not really getting too many different point of views. They're going to be thinking about different things when it comes to certain topics than someone of again, a different like gender or sexual orientation or person of color is going to be seeing that, that story through their lens. I think um, it would be more effective as a intersectional feminist podcast if they had another interview or somebody that was from a different racial or sexual or like gender minority, just someone else to give that perspective and to ask maybe different questions that Alex isn't thinking of because she's not looking at feminism from that perspective. To truly like include every single woman you have to be intersectional because you can't consider like just women based issues without considering like other axes of oppression that will also affect it and so I think like feminism has to be intersectional. Do you think that the term daddy is productive in a feminist context? Yeah because it kind of switches the 
society perceives the role of like when someone hears the word daddy, they think, okay, dominant male. But when you hear it used for a woman, it's like, yeah, that can be a dominant woman or a woman can be in the same position of power that a man can be in. I think when they're saying like they call the podcast, call her daddy, kind of like regaining that um, dominance, like you're calling her daddy, not him anymore. I actually started calling my friends like daddy. Like just, mm -hmm. um, when you think of a like an assertive female, you think of a bitch, but then you think of like a assertive man, you're like, oh, he's a boss. He's um, in a power position. He's powerful. Like um, he's respectable. And then you think of a woman, and she's like, oh, she's crazy. Um, and I think the term daddy is definitely like internalized misogyny still, just because it is the um, like male role. But I think there's a power to it. It kind of perpetuates the idea that like in order to be powerful you have to be masculine. I can't, can't be called her mommy because mommy doesn't have the same like oomph that daddy does because it's a masculine associated word. As we've seen throughout these interviews, a feminist analysis of Call Her Daddy is hard to do. The podcast openly discusses sex and relationships with women and about women, something that can be seen as radical in a patriarchal world that ostracizes conversations about the female human body and sex that aren't for male pleasure. But it also fails to have a level of diversity that can allow for marginalized voices and perspectives to be heard, adheres to traditional power structures and dynamics within heterosexual relationships, and perpetuates certain misogynistic views. A lot of our interviewees could not call Call Her Daddy a fully feminist podcast, but also could not deny that it has ideas that are inherently feminist. Some things that Cooper is praised for are sexually empowering women and using her platform to uplift other women. All of our interviewees who identify as women stated that they felt the podcast to be sexually empowering for women. Several of them stated that in their own experience, the podcast was the first time they were able to see women talking openly about sex, something seen as taboo in our society. This empowered them to be able to talk about sex in their own lives. Cooper also has other women and a few men on as guests and interviews them about their own lives and experiences. She is known for giving women who have been silenced in the media or not had the chance to tell their stories for other reasons a platform to tell their story. Women like Mia Khalifa, Amanda Knox, Courtney Stodden, and Jamie Spears are given the chance to tell their own stories, an inherently feminist idea. Other women like Miley Cyrus, Emma Chamberlain, and Holly Madison have gone on the podcast and opened up about topics they've never previously talked about or haven't to the extent that they do on Call Her Daddy. This speaks to the environment that Cooper creates on her podcast, allowing women to speak freely and openly about their lives in a way that they never have before. Even though Alex Cooper is using her fame and her platform to uplift other women, there is a serious flaw with the way she is doing so. The women she tends to have on the show are just like her, straight, white, cisgender women. She almost always fails to include perspectives outside of this narrow one. There have been a few guests who have different racial backgrounds and sexualities than Cooper, but there have been few and far between. A feminist analysis of Call Her Daddy calls for more. A true and fully feminist podcast demands intersectionality, as does feminism itself. Alex Cooper's podcast represents a form of feminism that has been branded as white stream feminism, in which, as Sandy Grande puts it, the feminist geography remains relatively stable, still dominated by white middle-class women, white stream perspectives, and the notion of the patriarchy as the universal oppression. The podcast largely discusses women's sexual empowerment on the basis of misogyny as being oppressive as those are the experiences of Alex Cooper as a cisgender, heterosexual white woman and most of her guests' experiences as well. But they fail to take into account sexual empowerment as informed by other forms of oppression. Being a woman of color, being a transgender woman, being a gay woman, being a woman with a disability, etc. Creating this narrow perspective also calls into question who exactly this podcast is sexually empowering for. If it is only doing so for white, straight, cisgender women, then that is problematic and not inherently feminist. All women deserve to be sexually empowered, and to create a space that only allows for certain women to be and leaves others out is flawed. Cooper has spoken to this lack of intersectionality before, stating that she never wants to speak on a subject that, ha that she has no right to, such as sexuality that is not her own, because she believes that it would be wrong. While this explanation has some validity, especially in the early days when the essence of the show was mostly Cooper's own stories, it is flawed now when she regularly hosts guests, already speaks on certain topics she is uneducated or inexperienced in, and her viewership has expanded to encompass women of many identities. Cooper also has become famous for her use of the word daddy. This shocking twist on a socially sexualized word is the first impression any potential new listeners get. Cooper is using the term daddy and the show name Call Her Daddy to flip the script about traditional power dynamics in heterosexual relationships, where the male holds the power. 
Although this can be seen as sexually empowering for women, it is flawed in the sense that it still holds the power dynamics that are oppressive to women. We argue that, from a feminist perspective, no person should hold a daddy position over their romantic or sexual partner in a way that creates an oppressive environment and relationship, as the term suggests. One thing that some interviewees touched on is the growth that the podcast and Alex Cooper as a person have experienced. From what fans refer to as the old era to the single father era, where Cooper hosts the podcast solo, there has been tremendous growth. The old era was dominated by two hosts, the second being Sophia Franklin which almost exclusively did not interview anyone and solely talked about their own experiences, giving advice about sex and relationships to their audience. However, the show looks different now. Today, Cooper hosts alone and very frequently had guests on, interviewing them about their own sex and relationship lives, but also about many other things. Some new topics she discussed include mental health, therapy, and stigma around fetishes and kinks, healthy sex tips, and life in general. From a feminist perspective, we think it's productive to allow Cooper and the show to grow to become a show that seems on the path to being feminist. While it is important to still recognize the flaws in both the old era and the single father era, this does not have to discount the growth that we do see. Call Her Daddy, at its core, is a podcast meant for comedy and entertainment. We believe that it is okay, as a feminist, to enjoy content like this, even with its flaws. We also believe, as feminists, that it is okay to simply dislike this content for its flaws and to not identify it as a feminist podcast, for it does lack significant intersectionality. While fans are encouraged to critically enjoy the podcast so that eventually it can become a totally feminist work, it is not the job of the oppressed to educate the oppressor. Following the words of Audre Lorde, women of today are still being called upon to stretch across the gap of male ignorance and to educate men as to our existence and our needs. This is an old and primary tool of all oppressors to keep the oppressed occupied with the master's concerns. Now we hear that it is the task of women of color to educate white women in the face of tremendous resistance as to our existence, our differences, our relative roles in our joint survival. This is a diversion of energies and a tragic repetition of racist patriarchal thought. With that said, if viewers of the show feel as though the lack of intersectionality is a significant hurdle to the show being feminist, it is not the job of those people who fail to see their identities and experiences represented to educate Alex Cooper. It is simply okay for them to critically dislike and to label the show as not feminist. We are not suggesting that Call Her Daddy can be labeled a feminist podcast, as we do not believe it fully achieves that. However, we do suggest that fans or listeners who enjoy the show and find the sexual empowerment to be important for feminist work to do what they can to hold Alex Cooper accountable. Cooper is a celebrity whose fame, money, and relevance rely on her fans, and therefore she has to listen to, at least a little, what they have to say and what they want to see from her show. As fans and listeners, you can tell her what it is you want. Tell her you want to see more diversity on her show, see the misogynistic scripts erased, or whatever it is that you want to see from Cooper and her platform. It is your decision of whether you wish to abandon Call Her Daddy for its flaws, but if you choose not to, you should critique them. Hold Cooper accountable and allow the show and the woman who runs it to continue to grow and improve. And maybe one day it will become a podcast we really can call Fully Feminist.